Diaz Gunners Collective TV. Back at it? You already know. Like a motherfucking smack addict. Bye, up, Bye, up, Bye. Look at him. In Nuno Stana direct fashion, we're going to get straight into the content of the day. But before we do, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Bing. Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directed in the direction of the dope content I am kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support, man. We're going up on this channel. And it's all because of you. And for that, I can say I'm very humbled and very much appreciative. So, gracias. I know I couldn't do without you. So, I was asked a question, man. The question I was asked was, who were the most despised, hated, just people that they, that they just didn't like, man, Norteños ever, right? And, I mean, that depends upon your area. That depends upon your barrio, your city. Because I'm sure every different Norteño has a different story, right? They could tell you about personal homeboys, man. And I know I had a personal homeboy that was Debo. He used to Debo on a motherfucker, right? But I think as stories get told and people hear about different things, different legends are born or, or tore down, you know, there's a couple of individuals that stick out to me as probably a couple of the most hated Norteños ever. And there's a few. There's a few, man, but I'm going to mention a couple. You see them on the thumbnail, right? I think the first one that I think is hated, one of the hate, most hated Norteños ever would be Daniel Lizard Ashali Hernandez, right? And the reason this individual was hated so much was he was one of the, the guy, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different types of reasons why he was hated on so much or why he was hated. And one of the reasons, first and foremost, was he was a switch-up artist, okay? Nobody likes a transformer. Nobody likes a Decepticon, someone who starts out one thing and ends up another, right? And this is one of the only Norteños that I knew that was a Southsider in the beginning, okay? Now, this guy's story is different. It's crazy because he started off as a sympathizer or a loyalist to the Sureño cause, to the Southsider cause, right? And while he was incarcerated, he switched up. He became a Norteño. Now, you're not going to hear that very many times. Them stories don't get told a lot because usually you're from where you're from and that's that's it. See, I've always been told, you know, once you get to that county jail your first time, your name, once it goes on paper, once you're established as whatever you choose to be, that's it. It's over. You're always going to be that. And if you fall out of favor with your people and you become in bad standings, you can't just say, okay, all right, I'm in bad standings here. Now I'm going to go switch up and be this. It doesn't work that way. Now, there have been plenty of Norteños even a very few Southsiders that have been bulldogs, right? They became bulldogs somewhere along the line or whatever the case may be. But that's a very rare thing that happens. But 99.9% .9 of the time, once you sign up for the party, you're going to party time like just like the way you are, man. What you said you are is what you are. No switching up. But this guy was able to do that. You know, this guy got to, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I got to edit that out, man. I'm still sick, right? Or maybe I won't. This guy got to San Quentin and decided that for whatever reason, he was going to become a Norteño after being a sympathizer to the Southern cause, right? And he was allowed to do that. And I think he was allowed to do that because no one seen him as a threat. No one realized he was going to become what he was going to become. He was going to gain status throughout the ranks of the Norteño movement. And ultimately, man, he was going to be the downfall of a lot of good, righteous dudes and the downfall of a lot of people. So he was hated right from the gate for that. You know, no one respects that. No one appreciates someone who comes into something that ends up something else. They're always going to be looked at critically. You know, you're going to look at him like real skeptical, like, damn, this Vato... He already shows that he's disloyal to his gente and his people. How are you just going to switch up and leave your people behind because you have family that are one thing or another? And with Daniel's, uh, you know, his history, it was that when he got incarcerated in San Quentin, he had family. He had a primo that was from the other side. Basically, that was a Norteño that started to indoctrinate him and educate him into the plight of the Norteño movement. And he decided that for whatever reason... He was going to join up. He was going to just leave his fucking old ways of thinking to the past and rock new. Again, man, I wasn't around back in them times for to, you know, to witness what would go on.
But I know if I was on that yard, I'd have been like, wait, hold up. How does that shit work? You could just be, be whatever you want to be nowadays. Because I wasn't laced up that way. I was taught that you are what you are, man. You know, I get asked a lot of questions about, hey, if I'm from out of state, say I'm from Texas and I get locked up, you know, what do I do? Who do I join? Can I walk bolo? Can I be on the yard solo? And I always say, no, that's not allowed in the state of California. You're going to, you're going to back someone's play. You're going to join up with somebody. You got a few options, man. North, South, or Paisas if you're Mexicano. If you're black, it's a different story. If you're white, you're a wood, brother. That's it, brother. Just, you better have legs, right? If you're black, it's a little bit of a different story. You get a few more options. You could be non-affiliated. Um, depending upon where you get incarcerated, you know, those are probably going to be the people that you rock with. But more than likely, if you're from out of state and you're a black man, you're just going to kick it with your people and you're going to get recognized as that and they're going to show you love. But when you're Mexican, it's different politics. You're going, in California, you're going to join up. You're either going to be a paisa, if the paisas allow you to be. You know, you can't, a lot of people utilize that like they utilize God as a, as a crutch, right? You're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to just get there and be like, no, nah, fuck that, I'm running paisa. Um, I don't want no, I don't want to indulge in the politics. You're going to politic, homie. That's just what it's going to be like. So you're either going to be north or south or bulldog depending upon if you get caught up out of Fresno, whatever, right? But um, you'll hardly ever see a guy go in as one thing or choose up with one side and then switch up. It just usually doesn't happen like that. So the guy was hated from the gate. And because he rose through the ranks, by the work that he put in, you know, I'm sure there was a lot of Northenders that were bitter towards that. Because there was a lot of homies, or at that time, Northenders that started out in the barrio, putting in work, you know, we're making all the right necessary mo necessary moves in that movement just to have someone bump them out of the way that was from the other side. You could, do you catch my drift? You can see how someone like that could be hated, right? He was despised more so because of what he done. You know, when he achieved a certain level, like Dubs would say, legendary status, when he achieved that, which he ultimately did and was put out on the streets to basically run the Northanials to, uh, to be in a leadership role, you know, that just doesn't come easy. You know, you're expected your leadership to lead you in a positive direction towards your goals, right? And when you have someone who's cutthroat, who's utilizing the Henthe's money, he's taxing the people, he's utilizing the people for his own uh, uh, personal benefit and gain, there can be a lot of people that despise and hate him, but you can't touch him because he has status and he's of a certain rank. Whereas if you touch him, if you make that move without, of course, it being told to you by someone above you, then you're all bad. You're up shit creek with no paddle. A little bit of paddle, right? And it's just all bad. And a lot of these guys know this. People like Lizard. He knew this. So he utilized his hint in his people, man. And somewhere along the line, he figured out that he could play both sides as far as law enforcement and the Norteño movement, and he started to work hand in hand with law enforcement. Now, if you listen to his story from his version, you know, and, and this guy's passed away now, but if you would have listened to his story, which he told his story on Gangland back in the days under the assumed name Casper, right? Then you would believe his story that, you know, um, he was being uh, uh, oppressed and personally, man, he was put in the hat and all these different stories that people tell to justify their actions. The fact of the matter is, this guy was a greedy, selfish individual that wanted to play the North Angels. And I had a homeboy that I talked to, that new Lizard, that was actually in Pelican Bay when Lizard was there, right? And I asked him, hey, bro, how was Lizard? You know, I never met him personally, but I heard a lot of bad things about him. How was it? He said, no, that was a righteous, solid homeboy, but he did take advantage of those he felt were less than. Those that he knew he could, he took advantage of them. He said, ultimately, what happened with that dude, bro, was um, he fell out of favor with those he was supposed to be in favor with because he started to pocket money. He started to tax individuals and at the same time, at the same time, work with law enforcement. I said, yeah, I seen, I seen the fucking episode of Gangland myself. And it's the truth. You know, um, people will justify their actions and they always blame other people. They never held them, hold themselves accountable for what they've done. And this guy didn't do that either. Oh, if these guys would have made that move or if they would have made that move, then I would have never did this. No, the fact is he did it. So no one else did it. So regardless of what he may say or what you may think, that guy chose to work with the feds 
and work hand in hand and wear wires and do all this to get his regiment, his gente, his own people caught up. Now, of course, if you're out there doing crime, it's only a matter of time before you get caught up in any situation. But for someone who had rank and status like this, man, you wouldn't expect this. You wouldn't expect someone who you're taking dictation from, someone who's educating you, someone who's basically calling your shots to be the same one to tear you down. But that's usually how it goes. Okay, I just seen where there was a, a murder that happened. I think it was in Sentinella. And it was a southern a southern thing. I didn't really speak on this situation. It happened the other day. I might see Dubs touched on the topic because he knew the guy personally. And it was about the name Wicked from Blight Street um, that just recently got, you know, uh, whacked on the yard or in wherever he got whacked at in Sentinella. And I see a lot of people that knew him or a lot of people, you know, chiming in through uh, the messages about this guy. And there's a lot of people that said, you know, he was brutalizing his own people or he was too harsh on his own people um, and that he was taking advantage of his own people. Basically, man, he was he was a scandalous individual. Now, I'll say this. You don't achieve that status and lifestyle being a nice guy. You don't achieve status uh, uh, not being a little cutthroat. You know, a lot of them guys are educated, very well recognized in their waters and their hoods for being someone that that displays leadership qualities someone who educates their people in canalismo and all that, but at the end of the day, will take your head off or have your head taken off if you don't follow the rules, okay? Lizard was the same way. He was one of those guys that was brutalizing his own people, utilizing him. The only difference with him was he was working with the federal government hand in hand at the same damn time. So this guy, let's, let's recap. This guy switched up from being a Southsider, loyalist with their movement to a Norteño, to rising up through the ranks just to get out and do a quick, complete circle. And the next thing you know, he's working with the feds against his own people that he switched up with. It's, it's just a trip, right? So this guy was able to single-handedly be the catalyst in taking down a lot of legends, a lot of people that, um, you know, you would, a lot of people that are well-respected. Let's just say that. That's the only way to say it. And... In doing so, he became one of the most hated Norteños of all time. People didn't respect it. You know, when he went on gangland and tried to cover it, they tried to blur his face out. Everyone knew exactly who he was. And it was crazy how he tried to justify some of his actions or still talk tough. I eat this, I sleep this, I bread this. At the end of the day, you told on everybody though. So it doesn't matter what you've done. Just like people tell me, it doesn't matter about your war stories or what you've done in the past. Once you cease to become part of the movement or you're no longer, you step back or you're no longer part of that, then everything doesn't count. And I say to them, it counts to me. Okay, but I understand where they're coming from with Lizard. This is someone who on his way out tore everyone down, took everyone down with them um, because he just couldn't hack it. For whatever reason, man, his greediness and everything he was doing caught up to him. So instead of taking it on the chin, taking his DP or stepping back from the cause, he chose to take everyone else down around him, man. And that's what made him one of the most hated Norteños of all time. Now, I told a little story about him a while back that he was actually out there in Idaho before he passed. And a little Southerner got a hold of me, man. And he was like, yeah, bro, I know that dude. That fool used to date my mom. And I was like, seriously? And he told me the story on how when he watched Gangland, man, they used to work together. That's how they met. He met him working. Dude was flying under the radar. He introduced him to his mom. They were real cool. And he thought Ashley, because Ashley was very light-skinned, Daniel Hernandez. He thought he was just a, an OG white dude or whatever, right? So he hooked him up with his mom or whatever. And then when he seen the Gangland episode, he approached him like, hey, bro, was that you? That looked like you, sounded like you. And that fool flipped out on him and, you know, went all crazy on him. Eventually, that dude ended up passing, or that's the, the word out there. But, um, you know, Daniel Hernandez will forever be live in infamy. He'll forever be known as one of the most hated North Daniels of all time. Now, the other guy you see on that thumbnail is Lencho Guzman, right? And anyone from San Jose knows that name. And I happened to do time with Lencho in the oil one time in passing, right? And I can tell you this. Here's most, one of the most corrupt, bandito-type characters. Took advantage of his people, treated Norteños like shit. He's probably one of the worst, most despicable men I ever met in my life or I ever had the 
the privilege of being around, man. He breathed hate. Um, he he spewed fucking hatred towards his own people. I always wondered why he even was a North Daniel. You know, at one point in time, was he righteous? Because this guy hated North Daniels and utilized them in every which way he could. You know, ultimately, he ended up getting taken down. His whole regiment did in San Jose, and it was a big deal. You know, it was a big case. And he flipped. You know, his wife flipped, and then he ended up flipping. Uh, but up until that point, I know I could tell you about my interaction with him. So I'm sitting in the hole, and he comes through, and one of the little homies from San Jose is like, hey, that's the big homeboy, Lencho. Right now, I'd heard his name before. And I was like, you know, pretty curious to see who it was. To see a little short, stubby, ugly, mugre looking motherfucker walking around like his shit didn't stink. I mean, this Valter walked around like he was Wes Watson just on top of the world, right? And I remember looking at him from a distance and give, when he walked by, I gave him a little like, yeah, like, what's up, bro? Like, I said mines. And he looked me up and down like I was a piece of straight caca. Just looked me up and down and just psh, whatever, right? And I was like, just that right there, I was like, wow. You know, this motherfucker hates his own people. I've heard a lot of stories. And I'm going to tell you a quick story. There was a Southerner, or there is a Southerner still, not was, there still is, that I talked to. And he was in Pelican Bay. He was in Pelican Bay and he just happened to be in the same, the same pod as, as Lencho. And he said, hey, bro, you know, I did a lot of time amongst Northennials. And back there in that shoe, at that time, you know, we were very respectful. He said, we all looked out for each other. Um, you know, uh, if someone went to Cantina, uh, other people would drop shit in front of the door, make pass some shit. You know, we just made sure everyone ate and shit like that. He said, this greedy motherfucker, bro, wanted everything to go through him. And then he would give it out to his homeboys and he wouldn't give them nada, bro. He would, t he would yell and scream at them on the tier. Um, it's just a straight bandito, bro. He said, I remember talking to a, another North Indian, like, why you guys let this dude get away with this shit? They were like, there was nothing we could do. He had status, you know? Um, but he just utilized that and thought he was the shit. And I said, it's crazy because I did whole time with them too. And just for a little while and the way he came at pe people, the way he treated people, he was despised. He was hated, man. There was dudes that literally wanted to get on his motherfucking head and whack him because of the way he was, you know? So karma caught up to him, you know, karma caught up to him because he was doing a lot of the same shit on the streets. You know, he was running a regiment in San Jose and he was brutalizing homies, you know, utilizing them to go out there, sell dope, make money, whatever he was doing. And at the same time, man, you know, uh, showing them no love, no respect, because that's the type of author he was. He was one of those guys. Once he got a little bit of power, he forgot about where he came from. He didn't care anymore. He was above everyone else. And nobody likes that. Everybody hates someone um, who fucking is corrupted by power and misuses it, right? That's how Lynch was. Now, um, I haven't met a person that's ever had a good thing to say about that guy. You know, I'm going to tell you a little story about a homie from Sanjo. So, there was a little homie I know from San Jose. He's in, he ended up catching 50 years to life, so he's been locked up for a minute now. But uh, he was running around out there at the time when Lynch was running his little regiment in the city of San Jose. And what I mean by regiment, it's just a little group of gente men um, that have power, right? So he was running around, and that's all I'll speak on, on that. But he was running around with Lencho, and he said, man, he was working hand in hand with him, doing some things for him. Lencho took a liking to him because he was young, he was flamboyant, he was out there making money, he was down, right? And of course, that's one thing about these characters, man, that are hated. Um, they find those that are really about the business, and they utilize the shit out of them. They keep them in close proximity because if they need shit done, they know that this guy would do it. Or, you know, it's just using them. It's really using them. And uh, that's what he was doing. And when the young homie started to realize, like, hey, this fool's fucking taking a big cut. He's not giving me no money. Like, everything I'm doing is basically for fucking free. So he got at Lencho, right? And Lencho slapped him. Lencho slapped him, okay? This is not the first time that I've heard things like this, that he would do this. I heard it from him doing it to a a righteous homeboy in a club as well, right? But anyway, so he says he approached Lencho. was like, hey, bro, you know what I mean? I did this little lick or whatever. We were supposed to fucking go halves. This was our own personal shit, not part of the regiment shit. And then he said, who are you to... And then Lencho told him, who are you to question me, bro? You'll fucking get paid when you get paid or you won't. And then that's just it. You're going to do what you do. 
and do what I say, bro, or I'll fucking, I'll have you whack. That's it. Straight up. I'll have your career ended. And the little homie wasn't no sucker, man. He knew that this guy had status. He knew who he was, but enough was enough. So he told me, bro, I'm not going to go out like that. You're going to have to do what you are going to have to do. And Lencho slapped him. And the homeboy got off on him, right? And he said, this dude smutted him up so bad. You can't hit me. After he hit him, you can't hit me. I'm made. I'm this. I'm that, right? And um, what had happened was, was Lencho had had him burn another connect that was another homie, right? So... Lynch knew that he couldn't really push the issue too much, but he was trying. Hey, the homie fucking did fly, took flight, this, this, that. So the homie met up with someone else, right, at the time and told him the real story. Like, hey, look, bro, if you guys are going to do what you're going to do, do it. But at the same time, this is what it was, right? And um, Lynch got the pass and the homie got fucking kicked to the curb, right? He ended up getting put on freeze and, and ultimately he ended up getting his whole career ruined behind that. I guess you could say it was what he done, right? But at the same time, this is why motherfuckers like Lynch were hated. Just hated. And I, I you know, I, I challenge anyone to go to the city of San Jose and ask about Lencho Guzman and hear a good and hear someone say a good thing about him. He was a tyrant. He was a tyrant with his people. He was uh brutalizing, like I said, and taking advantage of his gente, misappropriating funds, misusing funds for his own special uh benefit and gain. And uh, was of end of you know showing individualism and homeboy favoritism when it benefited him. But at the end of the day, ultimately that guy got in power, and and, and just got drunk with it. And instead of and that's what usually happens when people get drunk with power, the first people that they affect and they hurt are their own gente. The same ones that will do anything for them, those are the ones that they utilize because those are the ones they know they can get away with it with. Because most of them dudes are cowards. Most of them dudes won't put in no work themselves or do anything. They feel they've already achieved that status, that level. They no longer have to put in that work. But the shit never stops, right? You know what you signed up for. So those were a couple of the most hated Norteños. Like I said, ultimately, Lencho's wife did flip on the regiment, flip on him, and then he turned on everyone and told, and he's right now sitting in the SNY in a wheelchair, man, mobbing around. You know, last I heard he was in Vacaville or some shit like that, um, growing tetas. But I will say this. When I was around a man and I did whole time, Lencha to me was just a tyrant. The way he talked to people, um, the way he demanded respect, like you get respect if you give respect. But people that demand it and, and, and you know, um, really they're looked at like, hey, homie, you lucked into the status that you got. You know, they're going to be looked at some certain type of way, man, and karma will catch up to them. It's only a matter of time. Eventually it does. Anyways, man. You know, I was asked about a couple of the, you know, who's probably the most hated Norteños. Now, everyone has hated homeboys in their hood. And I had a, I had a homeboy named Charlie Boy, right? And uh, Charlie Boy was a big old motherfucker, cross-eyed motherfucker. Look, he's a Mexican Debo, for reals. And he wasn't necessarily hated. Like, I never hated him. I had love for him. But a lot of the homies hated him because he would just pull up and punk you for your shit. Damn, homie, that's a big-ass burrito. Can I get a bite of shit? Right? You give him a bite, and he'll be like... Hey, bro, you're not to go ahead and get you another one. This motherfucker just tastes too good. You'd be like, all right, yeah, full stop. He'd be like, no, I'm serio. Yeah, you're going to have to get another one, bro. I'm going to go ahead and handle this one. You're like, what? But I already took three bites out of it. He says, again, I just took the fourth. Boom. He was that type of dude, man. Damn, that's a sick-ass gold chain. Can I wear it? Hell no, you can't wear it. Come on, bro, let me try it on. Nah, bro. Hey, homie, I'm going to try it on. You know what I'm saying? Or you're going to try this on. <laughs> he was crazy. Um, hated. A lot of the little homies hated him back in the days, man, because he would just pull up and punk him. Um, and I remember a trip out of this. One time we're walking. Boom, boom, it's late and I. We're coming from a homegirl's house. We're going to 7-Eleven to go get some cigarettes, right? And we're mobbing and there's a paisa. And he's walking down the street and Charlie Boy's like, hey, uh, that's how you talk to you. You got a feria? I was like, I got like 10 bucks. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, that's not enough because I want a beast on. I want a pack of cigarettes. And he's like, he tells the paisa, hey. Come here. Que pasó? And the paisa is already scared. Like, oh, fuck. Right? Damn. I should have went. I should have taken left. Right? Por qué? So he fucking seen the paisa, man. He started brutalizing him. And I felt bad. I was like, hey, bro. Why are you doing him like that? Right? He's like, shut up, bro. I was like, oh, shit. This mobile punk. Right? 
Chicks just fools money. Money's flying everywhere, right? Well, as he's counting money, he's fucking so fucking high or whatever he is. He's dropping money, so I'm picking it up. Putting it in my pocket, man. We get in the store, buy what we get, what we buy, and we get back to the homegirl's house, and he's counting the money again. He was like, hey, homes, there was more than this. And I was like, yeah, and I have all this money in my pocket. He didn't drop like a few hundred bucks. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know, bro. He's like, hey, you robbed me, fool, right? That fool tried to get all crazy with me. I was like, here, I threw the money in his face. Like, damn, bro, you're such a fucking uh, uh, tyrant, bro. The way you treat people, man. You need to stop. He never changed, man. I don't know what happened to him. You know, uh, uh, but I got nothing but love for him. But yeah, he was despised and hated. Homies get hated because of the actions that they do. Not just because they're, there's a difference between hated on and hated, you know? Anyways, with that being said, man, I hope I answered the question of the guy that asked me who were some of the most hated Norteños ever. There you go, man. Uh, Daniel Ashley Hernandez from Pittsburgh. He ultimately was from Southern California, but when he started to be claiming Norteño, um, he said he was from Pitas, Pittsburgh, which is in the Bay Area, right? And then, of course, Lencho Guzman, which, of course, was from the city of San Jose. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming. And remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the strive, the struggle, the struggle, the strive. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. Make sure you guys tune in today as I will be dropping a super North Daniel and a super Paisa. I am back, man. I'm feeling a little bit better. You see me sneezing shit, though. I got, I got the sniffles. I got the sniffles, right? But I'm back. This is the gun. Bang, bang.